I wanted to ask it something that like nobody knew. I remember we like had our hands and I was like, all right, at what age was I introduced to sexual things? And immediately it goes to the age. And I was like, okay. And I was like, who was the first person to like sexually assault me and it literally gave the exact initials of that individual it was weird because i i wasn't like scared but i was like this is real and um i like went home and i remember I, like i like get home and i was like dad like i have to tell you something and so i'm sitting down and i'm like telling him about this and i'm like and it was so real and like my eyes were like lit up because again like i wasn't afraid i was more like this is crazy like this is so real and i remember he was looking at me and he looked like he wanted to cry like he was like looking at me and he looked like genuinely terrified and i was like what's wrong like are you okay? And he's like, Emily, he's like, do you, like, you're excited about this. And I was like, well, yeah, like it's real. And he was like, no, do you understand like what this is? He's like, that's not like, that's demonic. Hi guys, my name's Emily. And this is my testimony of how I began my walk with Jesus. So I grew up in Los Angeles. My mom, my stepdad raised me. I had five older brothers. Um, we were not raised Christian at all. When my mom originally left my biological dad because he was struggling with some addictions, um, the woman who actually took us into our house, her name's Susie, she met my mom at church. And so my mom, she believed in God um, and she had gone to church, but she was not actively living out the lifestyle. And so we weren't raised, you know, um, with them kind of teaching us who Jesus was um, or any of that. Um, yeah, I grew up in Los Angeles and then when I turned 16, um, I found out where my biological dad lived and he was living in Mammoth. He had been sober for about eight years. Um, and so I decided to move up there. I told my parents it was so that I could get to know my biological dad when really it was just me kind of running away um, to get away from everything that was happening in Los Angeles. And when I was in Mammoth, my dad and my stepmom, they actually used to have Bible studies at our house, but I was never really around for that. Like I would just be out with friends or I just, you know, it was kind of in passing. I didn't have a curiosity or interest at all. And they never kind of pushed it on us. It was more, you know, here and there they would talk about it, but it, was, it wasn't something that was implemented like within the house. Um, and so a few times like, me and my dad, I remember, especially at the end of my senior year, right before I was gonna to go to college, um, I used to get curious about like beliefs and the world and God, and I loved conversations like that. And so I remember I would have times where we would be talking and I would have this desire to kind of like learn more about like who's God or, you know, Jesus. And he would be talking to me. And every single time I talked about God, like I would wanna cry. And like, I remember, I remember I'd get this feeling like all through my throat and my chest and i didn't understand what it was at the time and i remember my dad telling me he's like that's god like he's you know he's calling out for a relationship and we'd have such like a powerful like amazing moment and then the next day would come and i would just kind of forget about it you know and go on with my life um and so looking back there were definitely seeds and it was definitely the holy holy spirit kind of like calling out to me but i wasn't in a place where i was open to receiving that or you know going deeper in kind of what that was um, so then later on, I graduated from Mammoth High School and I went to South Lake Tahoe to pursue soccer. Um, I played there, freshman year went amazing. Um, we won every single game up until the state championship final, lost, and it was like the worst loss I think I've ever had in my life because um, it was off of a free kick. And around that time, um, I was not pursuing God. I didn't even really think about Jesus. You know, I was just kind of living life, living the college life. Um, I had drank before that, but once I got up there, I got really into partying. Um, I started going out more. Uh, once season ended, it was kind of like there wasn't much to do in Tahoe. It snows, and so you pretty much just go to houses and party. Um, and so around that time when I really got into alcohol, and now I started kind of messing around with some drugs, it was a high and it was amazing and then there was the calm down and things got really really rough um i went through a very toxic relationship during that time it was just unhealthy i wasn't in a healthy place he wasn't in a healthy place and we kind of like depended on one another to try and like satisfy our needs and like make us feel happy and so when things got really bad i finally got out of that relationship i had to move home for a bit um just to kind of 
recoup, I guess. Um, yeah, it was just not a good place. And then around the time where I was like starting to pick myself up again was when there were kind of people in my life that God kind of brought into my life, starting with my mom and then also people I knew in Tahoe who started, I didn't realize it at the time, but planting seeds. And that's when I started to be more curious about, okay, who's God? Like, who's Jesus? You know, like uh, when I ended up moving back up to Tahoe, there was a guy named Willie. Um, he's one of my like closest friends now. Um, he ended up, so I actually met him my first week when I was in Tahoe. Uh, it was the third day I was there. And when we first met, it was so crazy. When I first met, he, um, we were some friends and they were actually smoking and me and him were just talking. And he shared with me about his faith. And like, I've always been curious about, you know, people's faith and beliefs. And so I was like all into the conversation. He was sharing how, you know, he believes in Jesus. And um, he told me about this church in Tahoe called Sierra Community Church. And he was like, oh, you should come. And at the time, like I was open for the conversation, but I didn't, I didn't really care to go, you know, I was just kind of like, oh, cool. And so I remembered that when I went back up to Tahoe and I reached out to him and I was like, hey, I'm back in town um, and I was looking for a job. And so he ended up setting me up with a job at Jim Love, which he owned. And then the two other owners, Amber and Ted, they are all Christian. And I didn't know this before going into the um, into the gym. And so when I was in the gym working like here and there, uh, Willie would always be reading the Bible. He always had like the Bible on his phone or playing worship music. And then I would get in conversations with the two owners and they would just kind of like share about their beliefs. And that's where I started to get more curiosity. And I was like, all right, like, you know, like, like who is this Jesus? You know, like who is God? And so I started going to the church that he had told me about. I would go there like here and there, but I still, it was nice, you know, the community was nice, the people were nice, but I still didn't have an understanding of like, who is Jesus, you know, like, who is God? And so that's when they started telling me like, oh, you should, you know, read the Bible. So I remember I got a Bible and I like started from the beginning and it was in Genesis. And then after I was like the son of the son of the son and I was like, all right, this is boring. I shut the Bible, I was like, I'm not reading this anymore. And um, so then I, I was just like, I can't do this. I don't understand any of it. And it was, yeah. And so then I found out there's the Bible app. And so I downloaded the Bible app and I started with plans because you can do like plans for I don't know, whatever you're feeling. So I, I think I was like depression and like anger, like all that stuff. And so like, I was like, let's do these. And I started doing that like every day. And after I started doing that, that's when with my Bible, I started, I think the first book I ended up reading was John. And it was just little things like I literally just started like reading once a day and slowly like I didn't realize this while it was happening but slowly I started you know reading more to where it'd be like first thing when I woke up and then like before I went to bed and then I would spend time in my car like I didn't even understand I was worshiping but I'd be in my car like listening to worship music and like talking to Jesus or the Holy Spirit you know at the time I had no I didn't understand what I was doing but I just had this like desire to do it and I would be in there for hours just spending time with him and like slowly after like a month of doing this I kind of like looked back and I hadn't drank I hadn't gone out and I was like whoa like you know it was like my I don't know like my desires kind of shifted without me actually recognizing it was very subconscious like all my like habits started to change and so around that time like I was really on fire like I would go to church and I'd have like a notebook. I remember I probably looked so weird. I had like a spiral notebook I'd bring to church and I would just be like writing down a bunch of notes and then I'd go home and I'd be like, all right, like Jesus, like explain this to me. Like, I don't understand this, you know, because at the time, like I still had an understanding of like, I kind of, I lacked in trust with men and people. And so I was like, I don't want to just base my understanding off of this person. I was like, Jesus, like, like you explain this to me because I don't understand this, you know? And so that's where like I definitely was on fire looking back like I was just on fire for the Lord I was hungry I just like anybody that I found out was like Christian like I wanted to pull from them I wanted to learn and so as this was going on I eventually um, went to my pastor and I was like I want to get baptized and he was like okay like do you like know what baptize like baptism is and I was like um like that's how you become like a Christian you know like that's how like that's what you gotta do and I remember he was like talking to me about it for a while 
And so we're planning the baptism. Um, I actually ended up getting baptized on September 25th of 2020 and it was in the lake and it was crazy it was like leading up into the baptism i'm on fire i love jesus i'm like you know growing with god things are great people are like yeah like you know get baptized it's gonna be amazing all this good stuff right and the day of my baptism i wake up and i'm crying and i'm like mom i'm not going like i was so afraid i was i had so much doubt i was like i'm not ready like i can't do this and you know, my mom so she's like forces me to go and we go and I get baptized and it was a beautiful day. Next day I wake up and probably for the next month it was like right away. I just fell into like back into my old habits. I started going out again. Like it was just one thing after another and I was like, Whoa, like what happened? You know, like after two months of this, I was like, What the heck happened? And it was because like I had that desire, but I didn't have that foundation yet, you know? It, and so after I get baptized, um, I didn't realize it at the time, but it was just a bunch of spiritual work. It was like one thing after another. And like, that's when I kind of started going back to old habits. Um, around that time, I went back to Mammoth to visit my dad. And I had a old friend who, um, she was in town as well. I used to play soccer with her. And I've known this girl for years. Um, and I didn't realize like, we never really talked about, I guess, like her spiritual understanding or beliefs. And so we were driving home from the field uh, one day and like I was talking to her about Jesus and she started talking to me about the Ouija board. And I have never touched a Ouija board, but I like knew about them and I, I only associated them with like demonic things. And I was like, no, I was like, that is so bad. Like, I, like how can you be doing that? And like, I was scared and she was like, no, no. She's like, um, you just have to know like how to do it and not all spirits are bad. You know, she's just, like saying all these things. And at first I was very like, no, like very tough. Like, I can't believe you're even doing that. And so finally we get to her house. And by this time, like she like, I don't say convinced me, but by the time we got there, I kind of was like, okay, like, like I'll try it. Cause she was just like, you should try it. Like, just try it. And then if you don't like it, like we can stop. And so I was like, you know what? Like, all right, fine. So we go inside and um, she has, uh, she has this like game room. It's like right next to her room. And she told me like, she only does the Ouija board in this room. And she's had to tell the spirits like, to stay in this room because like they used to like go into her room. Like it was, it was so weird. And like, I, I'm like, girl, like I've known you for years. And I didn't know like she was doing any of this stuff. And so we go into this game room and this is like, I guess their spiritual room where they do whatever. And we get onto the Ouija board. And I honestly, I was still kind of doubting a little bit because I didn't think like, I was like, oh, she's gonna move it or something. And so we put our hands on like the, little thing and at first we started with like light questions and right when we started like you could tell that she wasn't pushing it because like the way it would move was like like it's not like someone pushing it it's almost like this like I don't know how to explain like a weight like it was moving and so at first I was kind of like okay like, it's kind of weird and we're asking it light questions and then after a while I was like all right like I want to know if this is real and so I wanted to ask it something that like nobody knew, even my friend, like she, had, she I've never told her this before. I've never really talked about this stuff. And so I remember we like had our hands and I was like, all right, at what age was I introduced to sexual things? And immediately it goes to the age. And I was like, okay. And I was like, who was the first person to like sexually assault me? And it literally gave the exact initials of that individual. And I was like, okay, who was the second? and it gave that exact initials and I was like and so it was like one after another and I was like whoa so at this point like it was weird because I I wasn't like scared but I was like this is real you know and it almost looking back it almost I guess excited me so I was like this is real like you know and and I wasn't afraid because nothing scary happened um so then we kept going and I kept asking it questions that like nobody would know the answer to and so at this point I'm like okay like this is real and we like, get off of it and um, I like went home and I remember I, like I like get home and I was like dad like I have to tell you something and so I'm sitting down and I'm like telling him about this and I'm like and it was so real and like my eyes were like lit up because again like I wasn't afraid I was more like this is crazy like this is so real and I remember he was looking at me and he looked like he wanted to cry like he was like looking at me and he looked like genuinely terrified and I was like what's wrong like are you okay and he was like Emily he's like do you like 
you're excited about this and i was like well yeah like it's real and he was like no do you understand like what this is he's like that's not like that's demonic you know he's like yes it's a spiritual realm but there's different ways to access spiritual realm and he's like and look at how like the place that you're at where you're like finally walking with jesus you know you just got baptized and now like this door is open and that's when he starts just kind of talking to me and like educating me on i guess like the demonic and what that can do and that's when i was like oh shoot like i felt really bad you know and i was like oh like like i just had no idea you know i didn't understand what i was doing i didn't understand like how that can open doors um so then that happened um and then i like never touched it again you know i think i like prayed with my dad after that um and then i went back to tahoe and at this time i was living in a house with a bunch of girls and one of the girls she was one of my closest friends she used to do like tarot cards um so she grew up her mom like does tarot cards pretty much like every day and so that's how like she got introduced to them and i had never heard of tarot cards before um and she was like oh it's just like card readings you know like you can do where it's like the three it's like the past the present the future and then there's like an overall one and so she was doing them for all the girls and at first i like i felt like i was kind of hesitant but then i was also curious and so i was like hmm, like okay like let's just do it and so i remember she like does my reading and it was just, it was so weird like it was very very on point for everything like it was just weird like i had never kind of done that before and i remember i think i like cried too after and like we just started talking and i started sharing things with her um, and then after that, like, I never did a full one again, but she used to do them to the other girls and she would do like daily ones. And I think that I did that once with her. Um, and then after that, like, I remember, I, I don't think I realized at the time, but I think it was the, I was convicted because I started thinking about it as I like got back into the word and went back to church. And I was like, this is wrong. Like, this is not right. You know, like you should not be doing this. Like this is demonic. This is not, you know, like I, I had more understanding now about the spiritual realm. I was like, okay, the spiritual realm is real. There's different ways to access it. This is not how you should access it. Um, so then I kind of like stopped doing that. I believe the Lord actually was protecting me at this time because though I was battling, I think my spiritual warfare was more within like, um, my temptations and like addictions and kind of sin but in that house actually at the time when i separated and i was like i'm not gonna do this anymore and i was just in the word of god everybody else started experiencing like either night terrors or they started seeing things around the house like it was a very looking back like this house was not good like anybody who came into this house like it was not okay like i remember them telling me like certain things that they encountered happened and i never once had any of that so looking back, like I didn't have any, I guess like physical, um, like physical encounters or anything to monitor like that. It was all my spiritual warfare was literally like internal and having to do with like my addictions and sin and, you know, falling back into like drinking or drugs and stuff. Um, but yeah, it was like all over the place, but I was like fighting it. And the reason it was a warfare was because I wasn't fully dove into the sin. It was like, I was back and forth because I knew it was wrong and then I'd feel bad about it. But then yeah, I kept doing it, you know? And so it was just this like cycle. Yeah. So then around this time, um, I had a friend who was in Seattle at the KD conference and, uh, they called me one day and I was back in LA visiting my mom. They're like, hey, like, are you in Seattle right now? And I was like, no, I'm in Los Angeles. And they said they had saw someone who looks like me. And so then they started telling me like that they were at this conference in Seattle and I had never been to a Christian conference like ever. And they're like, oh, if you can make it, you should come out, there's two more days. And so I literally booked my flight and I flew out that day. And um, I that's where, I think I was there only for the last service. Um, it was on Friday when they had like, the fire tunnel or all that stuff. I actually walked through the fire tunnel, but I didn't understand anything going on. I kind of was just like, it was so weird. I was like, oh, this is like cool, but also like very weird. And um, they had mentioned Katie College. And at the time I was kind of like, oh, cool, you know, like whatever. I had no desire to go to a Bible college. I didn't think I was eligible for a Bible college. And so I go back to Tahoe and as I'm like working and at the time I was getting ready to go play soccer, um, two of my teammates went over to Portugal. And so the coach over there was like, hey, like if you get your passport, we could use a forward. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, let's go to Portugal. And so I started training for that. I got my passport. I'm like on board. I'm like, all right, cool. A few more months and I'm gonna go to Portugal. 
and leading up to it, I kept getting this like thought about this Bible college. And I'm like, why am I thinking about this Bible college? Like, I don't want to go to Bible college. And um, I didn't realize, now I realize it was the Holy Spirit kind of like pushing me of like, apply, 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 you know? And so I remember eventually I like went onto the website and I tried filling out this application probably six different times. And every time I'd get halfway through and I'd get to the same question and I would stop and I would start getting doubts and fear of like, there's gonna be way better applicants. You know, like they're not gonna accept you. Like you're not even eligible. Like you really think you can go to Bible college. All these thoughts. And so I wouldn't apply. And then on the seventh one, I finally went on. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna answer these completely honest, completely real. And if they don't accept me, like they don't accept me. So then I submit my application. And uh, right after that, I remember I started like praying about it. And I didn't realize the words that I was saying, but I kept praying, all right, God, if I get accepted into this Bible college, I'll give up soccer, I'll give up everything, I'll lay it all down and I'll, I'll go, you know, like I'll follow you. Because at the time it sounds easy, you know, I'm like, oh, like, and I kind of thought too, I was like, I'm gonna get declined, like it's fine. And so I kept praying this like over and over. And then um, I remember I was at work and my roommate, she calls me, she's like, hey, the letter came in. And I was so nervous, I was like, oh, okay. So then I went home and I was in her room and I opened it up and I like see, congratulations, you've been accepted. And I was like, oh, shit. And I just like, I wasn't happy. I wasn't sad. I was just like, oh no, like, like I promise God, like I will give up everything and go. And so now I started getting like, oh no, like I have to give it all up. And um, I was just like, oh no, like I can't do this. And so again, back and forth, back and forth on if I was gonna go. And leading up, I was like, all right, God, like if you want me to go, like, you gotta help me out because you had to give a, I think it was like a $500 deposit and it was by a certain due date. And so I had a planned meeting to meet with Jessica at the school. I was like, hey, I wanna ask you some questions. And I didn't have the money. And I remember I had to leave that morning and I was like, I was looking for, I think my card. I was looking for my credit card, couldn't find it. And I was like, God, like, I don't know how I'm gonna pay for this. I was like, so if you don't supply, like, I'm not gonna go. And this guy, oh my gosh, I get in my car and I see this envelope on the side of my like driver's door and I pick it up. And honestly, I thought that it was gonna be like the credit card cause I was waiting for it in the mail. I was like, oh, like maybe it's like this. So I like, pick it up and I open it and it's a check and it's from Lake Tahoe Community College and it was for $550 and it was made out to me. And I'm like, no, like I, right away, I was like, no, like there's no way, there's no way. And so, I'm like freaking out. I'm like, no way, no way. Like, is this is this still good? I had no idea what it was from. It literally, it didn't say like what it was from. It just said that the school like gave, like sent me this check. And so I drive to my roommate's work and I was like, I was like, look at this check. I was like, tell me if this is real. Like, is this still good? Is it like, can I like deposit it? And she's like freaking out. Cause she also knows like that I didn't have money. I had to go um, to Sacramento that day and like give them my deposit. And so she's like, yeah, like it's good. And this is when she was like, dude, like this is crazy. Like what are the odds, you know? And so then I drive down and I was like, all right, God, like, I guess, you know, this is confirmation. So then I get my deposit and I confirm I'm going to come to KD, um, Kingdom Domain College. So right before I came uh, to KD College, I remember I had these thoughts of like, oh, like, there's going to be so many like Christians. Like, I don't really know how to talk to Christians. You know, I didn't really know how to feel like I, I was curious about who God was, but I, I still had a lot of understanding to gain, I guess. And I just, I didn't really know how to feel. I was very hesitant, kind of standoffish. And so I remember like in the beginning of the school, um, we went to this retreat in Tahoe and they were like worshiping and then they did like a fire tunnel and like there was all this stuff going on. People were like prophesying and like laying hands on people. And I remember thinking, because at the time, like I still, like I had never experienced that. And so I was like, I was very doubtful. I was like, what is going on? These people are weird. Like, this is like, I just had no idea. Like I wanted to leave. And like, I remember, like I would see people fall or do certain things. And I, I didn't really, I kind of doubted it or questioned it. I'm like, I used to think in my head of like, oh, they're probably faking or like, you know, like that's not real. And you know, even at school and stuff, like I was very kind of like standoffish cause I wanted to observe, you know, I wanted to see like what was true. Um, and, 
but then at the same time, it was weird because I was still like, like I wanted that and I wanted to have like those kind of like experiences or encounters. But then I'd be like, oh, they're probably just faking because like I haven't felt that, you know, I haven't experienced that. It was weird because like I was growing 100%. I was growing in my relationship. I was growing in my understanding. And like I'd have these beautiful moments in worship where like to the point where it, where you're crying, but it's not because you're sad, it's because of his glory, like his beauty. You know, like I had those moments. I had those like special encounters where I could, I knew that he was talking to me. You know, I knew that he was showing me things. Um, and so it's strange because like I had that, you know, I was growing. He was definitely doing a lot of like healing and redefining for me because like before coming in, I had this certain perspective on, especially like men and people and you know that they always had alternative motives you know and that um i didn't like feeling like i owed anyone anything whether it be time or me talking to them or you know any of that stuff and so there was a lot of redefining he had to do in my understanding of relationships with people primarily um but also in family you know and in myself and so during like these few months leading up to katie conference like he was doing a lot of kind of it was healing and redefining and I guess growing in my relationship and understanding of who he was because it, there would be moments where I'm like, wow, like he's so good. But then I would have other times where I'm doubting still, you know, or I still would, ha I would still struggle or I'd still fall, you know, and I'm like, why am I still like messing up? You know, I'm literally at a Bible college, like all these other people seem fine, you know, because nobody really talks about like that they're struggling and the enemy likes to make you think like you're the only one, you know, like you're the only one going through this. And so I remember leading up to, we had a winter break right before Katie conference and um, winter break was all right. Like I, I definitely fell back into some old things. Um, and when I had returned to Sacramento, I think it was within the next week that we were gonna have to go out to Seattle. And I was originally supposed to drive with one of my roommates, but I, I just had all this like doubt. I was feeling just super down about everything and almost like, I guess, scared to go or just like uneasy. And I didn't want to go. I was like, I don't want to go like, and it was probably because I knew like how I had been living. And so I ended up like bailing out on my friend and I was like, hey, like, I'm not going to drive. And I wasn't going to go. And then my mom she like surprised me she's like oh i got you a ticket you know so you don't have to drive and i was like oh thank you you know like oh and so i was like shoot like now i have to go and so i remember i went to the airport and um i used to have a habit of like i'd go to airports early because airports are fun you know there's people you can talk you can grab a drink and so I remember I went and I was like, I don't want to go to this. And so I was like, I'm just going to get a drink to like calm my nerves, you know. And one drink, I think, like turned to two. And then by the time like I got on the flight and I was like getting ready to land, I was I was pretty drunk. I was like drunk, but I wasn't bad. Um, and luckily, like the person who picked me up, I don't even think they knew I was drunk, actually. Um, they probably just thought I was super excited about Seattle. And so they picked me up from the airport. I was still a little bit drunk. And we go to the house and it, it was late. So then I ended up just going to bed. Um, and in the morning, I remember I felt super down. Like, I just wanted to cry this day. I was just, I was not feeling it. I was feeling like a little bit sick too. Um, just like physically and emotionally, I was not there. I actually, I think I saw this photo I took. It was on Snapchat and it was like day one feeling like crap. I was like, let's see how the rest of this goes. And I was just not there. And I didn't want to socialize with anyone. Um, but we had to go because I was serving pretty much every day there. Um, I think there were only two days that I had off of serving. And so we go to the conference and we're kind of like setting up and um, just doing all that stuff. And then I think that was Monday and then Tuesday I served. Um, and I'm seeing like all these people just like getting encounters, getting wrecked. Like it was just, it, it was like, I had my moments too, where it was like this high and it was great. But then I still was like, all right, like, I don't, you know, I don't feel anything. I'm not receiving anything. And so then, um, Wednesday comes and Wednesday was one of the only days that I wasn't serving. And, uh, we had like our morning, uh, worship. They were in like two sections. So we had the morning service and then there's like a lunch and then you have the evening service. And this day, like 
it was weird in the beginning in the first service I was doing okay I wasn't feeling completely like depressed or upset or anything but I just I was just kind of going through it um, and then we had lunch and I left for lunch um, and then I had a very like inch I had a very interesting conversation with somebody who was there uh, from my past that like I ran into and I think it kind of triggered some anxiety in me already and so coming from that I came back from lunch and I'm walking in and um, I run into Mila and she's like one of the staff members at KDC College and she's like hey Emily like how are you and I was like oh I'm good and she like stops me and she's like are you sure she was like like what's going on and I was, and I just like started crying I was like well I guess I'm not good and so I just started breaking down and I'm just like honestly like I don't know what's going on. I'm like, I keep messing up. Like, I'm like falling back. I was like, I don't know if there's something wrong with me. I was like, but I don't get why it's so hard. Like all these people, I see them come here. They're like worshiping God. They like just have like no doubts, no questions. Like they just, they just believe, you know, they have this, such a strong faith. And like, even the guest speakers, I'm like, how do they get to this point? Like, like they just almost like know that God's real, you know? And I'm like, and it's like, I try to do that, you know, but then I mess up or I fall back or I doubt or I question. And I'm like, and maybe that's like separating me from God. I was like, but I don't get why it's so hard because like all I wanted was Jesus. All I wanted was to just know him in a personal relationship and a personal experience. And like, I never got that. And I, I was like, I was sad, but I was mad too. I was genuinely was just like, I don't understand. And I, I just like started sharing all this to her and I was just sharing with her like why not me you know like I remember like coming here like so for me looking back like when I would see people faking I'm like oh it's not real it's because I haven't experienced it and like I'm someone like from day one I was like I won't fake anything and like I've told God this like God if you don't make me move like I'm not moving like if I don't fall I don't fall like if it's not you then it's not you know like I'm not going to do anything because it has to be real. I was like, I won't fake anything. I want it to be real. I want it to be genuine. And um, and so I was like, why not me? Like, oh, I was just so angry, I remember. And I was confused of like, is it my fault? Is it me? Is it something I'm doing wrong? Like, like clearly I'm struggling with unbelief or something. Like, how do I fix that? Like, and I was like, because my heart's there, like I have desire, I ask God, but then he doesn't do anything. You know, I'm like, God, like, you know, come heal me or set me free. Like you're doing it for all these people, but then why not me, you know? and i'm just like pouring all this out to her and she like prays for me and then i like walk back in and i'm still just so upset and i'm just thinking in my head like i'm so done you know like like god if I, if you don't do something like i'm done like i'll get back and i i give up like i can't i don't know i was just i was in just this really upsetting moment i don't know how to explain it um and so I walk in and I remember I like went to the wall and they were still doing like rehearsal and I didn't want to talk to anyone. Like I remember people tried to come up to me and I didn't want to talk to anyone and so I like sit against the wall and I'm just crying. Like I was just crying and I think people were just kind of like, like what is going on? You know, like we service hadn't started anything and I was just crying. I didn't want anyone like touching me or like talking to me and I remember just like, God, like, please, like, please, like, I need you. Like, I need you to come through because like, I don't know what else to do. Like, clearly something's wrong with me, you know? And um, so then the service starts and you go into worship and worship was fine. And then um, the guest speaker that night was Nathan Morris. And I had never heard of Nathan Morris before. Like I hadn't heard honestly a lot of these speakers before. Um, and so he like starts his um preaching or teaching and like while i'm sitting there like everything was speaking to me because one thing about nathan morris which i really admire is like i was saying like i like the blunt like raw you know realness and truth and like nathan like the way that he was like preaching the word is like he doesn't sugarcoat it or make it light like he literally like says it how it is and it penetrates and so i was really like resonating with it and it, and i was like okay like like it was weird it was like it was so real but also convicting and i'm like oh like that's what i want and i remember i was like i want that like like for instance Nate morris he can speak like that because it's real for him you know like it's the truth and like he just has such a strong faith and belief and i'm like what like why can't i have that you know like i want that and um so we're sitting there and he's like going through his thing and then at the end of it um i think the first he was doing like altar call type things um and the first one he called for like teens who were struggling with suicide um and so they like went up and people were like praying for them and then the next one 
um, was for people like living in sin and you know so struggling that like want to get out of it and I've had people you know call for these before and I've like gone up and nothing's happened you know I haven't felt anything I didn't get any type of freedom and so already this day because I was already doubting so much I was like I don't really want to go up there you know and then I just had this feeling of like just like go up like just go up and I was like oh, like I really don't want to do this and so I was like, okay, like I'm just gonna go in the back. So like they had, um, there was like the stage and then kind of this floor room and then uh, chairs lined up. And so they had to push, they pushed the chairs back. And I remember I like slowly like walked up and I stood like right back by the chairs. Cause I was like, all right, I'm back here. Like no one's gonna touch me. No one's gonna see me, you know, like, and before when I would go up, I remember I was like, curious of like I wanted to watch what would happen you know like when people would like get prayed for or touched you know or have encounters so I was like curious of that but then at the same time I was like oh like I want to encounter but before where my heart and my mind was was I thought I was like I need like somebody to touch me you know I was like like I want them to come pray for me you know like that's where I thought it would happen it wasn't like oh I'm looking at you Jesus you know like I'm focusing on you and so at this time because I was already just like I kind of like, gave up on all that I'm in the back by the chairs and I remember uh, we just like start like saying the prayer and at this time I was just like Jesus like I just want you like like I just want you like like please like I remember I was just so upset and so I started like, praying and immediately he like drops me to my knees and I'm on my knees and I'm just like I'm just like telling him everything I've been doing and I'm just like I'm sorry like I'm like I'm sorry I'm like I don't know what else to do like I finally was in a position of like like it's not only that I want to, but like, I literally, like, I need you, you know, like, I need you, I need your help, like, I don't know what else to do, I literally can't stop doing this stuff, I can't, like, like, I'm not happy, and it was just kind of, like, the end, like, this is, like, the final call, like, if you don't save me now, like, I'm done, and I'm, like, I'm, like, saying all this, and as I'm, like, saying this, this woman, I don't know who she was, still don't know, to, like, to this day who this person was, but I know as a woman because I remember her voice, she like comes up on my knees and she just touches my uh, stomach. And I don't know what she said. Um, I don't know if she said a few things, but she touches my stomach and I fall forward. And now like I'm on the ground and like while I'm in this position, um, my like eyes are shut and I'm just stuck there. And I just start seeing like, it was weird. Cause I wasn't like verbally like talking about the things that like, I guess I was repenting for, but I started seeing like the things that I like had done or like I was struggling with. It was like, he was like showing me. And for once, like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. Like, like God knows we can have, we can say any word we want, right? Like we can pray out these things, but he knows where your heart posture is. And this was the first time I think my heart posture was truly in a place of like, like I'm truly wanting to give this up. You know, like I actually like am coming before you. I want you, you know, cause before I was saying it, but I I was, I, I still enjoyed those things. You know, I still wanted to live that. And now I was in a position of full surrender. And so like, while I'm down, I just get like the fire, like all through my body. And like, I had like heard about the fire, the Lord before, but like I never personally experienced it. And there was just fire through my body. And as he's like showing me all these things, um, it was on the ground where like I feel like he literally came and like pulled out it was like this weight but he was pulling out everything that like I was struggling with like all additions all the soul ties like complete just literally like, like pulling it out of me and it was on the ground like that was when I first encountered like the Lord it wasn't you know later when Nathan came and like prayed for me it was literally like, as I was on the ground and as this was going on um, I don't remember how long I was there. Um, I, I honestly couldn't tell you, but I was just on the ground for a while. And like, I remember hearing my name and they're like, oh, like, is there an Emily? And I heard my name, but I, I was just too like, in this moment where I wasn't like, uh, like I was like, maybe it's not me. And so uh, the next thing, I think they say it again. And then all of a sudden like these, like two guys like come and they're like picking me up. And like at this moment when they picked me up, like I opened my eyes and I could see my feet, I could see my legs, I could see the ground, but I can't feel anything. And I'm like, I'm conscious, but I'm not like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I'm not like fully there, but I, I like, I could literally see and I'm like, why can't I walk? Like in my head, I'm thinking like, like, why can't I move? You know, like I just, and like, it was weird. So they like, they're like dragging me up 
and um they like, dragged me up to stage and then I remember right when I like get up there like when Nathan comes over to me I only lifted my head once like I like lift up my head and I remember right when I looked into his eyes it was the fear of the Lord like straight through my body because it was like this is not it wasn't that like I saw a man it was like this is like Jesus talking to me and immediately like I put down my head because I felt like not like this unworthiness but it was like fear almost but not like not like terrified fear you know of something like scary but it was like literally just the fear of the Lord if I can explain it like he like like this person who knows like everything you know and so I like draw my head and as he starts um like praying over me I keep feeling this weight just like going down and I remember I, I like I was like trying to like fight it like poor man whoever I was like holding his wrist but I was like gripping onto that like I was like I'm trying to fight at first if I can like that's explaining it right and um so he continues and continue with the way and then like at this time it was just like confirmation after confirmation after confirmation and so then I was like on the floor um and at the time like I heard him releasing these words but right after I could not tell you exactly what he said um and so after I like get up, I remember I like get myself off the stage and I go over to the wall and I'm just like shaking. Like, like my body, I was just on fire. I just, I could not stop shaking probably the rest of the night. And I remember like Nadia comes up to me and she's like looking at me and I couldn't even talk. Like, I was just like, I all I could say was like, yes, like I believe, like, yes, I, I believe. Like, because like for the first time it was like, I, like I genuinely could say in my whole being like God's real like Jesus is real like this is so real and all I could say and repeat was like yes I believe it. yes I believe that like I couldn't talk I didn't even want to talk like people kept you know like they were like coming up to me and like I was just like I don't even want to talk like I just need to go home and be alone with the Lord like I was just like I think my body was trying to process what just happened um and so like eventually like they gave me back to the house and like I'm just like coming down from this and processing and I remember I was just crying and just like weeping and I was like wow like and I felt so bad because I doubted him but at the same time like honestly for me as I was pleading before like if it wasn't real then like I'm not gonna do it right and so like I used to doubt these things and I think God knew like just the person that I am like he's got to do something big to where he fully smacks me to where I can't like deny that he is real for me to believe it because you know I've had people like release words over me or you know they'll release like something encouraging right and you're like oh that's nice it sounds sweet but you know it there's still room for doubt you know what I mean like you can be like oh like that you can I guess forget that easier than if you have a true encounter and for me like I didn't need a word I didn't need you know someone to pray over me like because I encountered God by myself on the floor and that's when it was like I can't even deny your power you know and then of course the cherry on top of like this person I've never met in my life and I know it wasn't him I know it was honestly Jesus speaking through him him calling me by name like that's another confirmation of like you know and God just knew like okay she can't deny this you know like this is something like she can't sit here and say like oh like he's not real you know like he just knew yeah I remember Mila uh, her husband like right after that encounter when he saw me I was just standing there and he was like you look so in love and I was like I am like I remember like I just felt I was filled with love. I was filled with joy, like right after. It was just this far and it was because like how he impacted me, like it did change my heart. You know, like I was I was I had a hardened heart. I was very cold before. It was easier for me to suppress things. It was easier for me to, you know, put on this tough face and, you know, like not show my emotions. But now it's like I'm crying like over something that is not even sad, you know, like I'm crying all the time. And like my heart was so warm, but it, it, they weren't always sad tears. It was just like, wow, like I, I fell in love, you know, like I don't think I had loved him before. I knew about him, but you can't love someone that you don't have a relationship with. You know, you can know of them. You can be like, oh, I know this person, but you don't have true, you don't have an intimate relationship. You don't have that love, you know, they don't know your heart. And so right after, like I was just filled with love. I was, you know, and it wasn't just like, love for him but it was also for the word like immediate after i remember like i just had a burning desire like i just wanted to be in the word it was just like I, and it was easy it was like before like i'd get kind of bored sometimes you know like reading the bible is not always that exciting but like i looked at it as like 
you know, stories, which they are, but it was entertaining. It was like, I wanted to read it. I wanted to spend time with him because I was like, okay, like, I remember I had my Bible and I, I had like this weird moment of like, and it seems so surreal, so, but like I was looking at it and I'm like, this is like, th these are your words. Your words are you and like, this is life. You know, like the, the, like the words can literally come to life. Like they're real. And so I was like, I want to take you everywhere with me. Like, I remember I was like holding my Bible all the time. I had it like in my bed, you know, like I have it like, I'm like sleeping with it. I'm like, I want to be with you. Like you're alive. Like, I don't know. I had just this like, not obsession, but this like desire of like, I want to be with you as much as I can, you know? And I, like, I was just feeling myself with the word because when when something's removed you need to fill that because there's a space and so it was easy for me this time to fill that space with the word because i was in love you know i had the joy and i had the fire like i just had this fire and like because it was real you know i think that's why the biggest change because now it was real for me you know and i had that understanding with my like heart definitely being kind of like more warm and soft now i was a lot more open to talking about things um, because even though I had received that freedom that was on a spiritual level, but now your soul has to catch up, you know, and like my soul had a lot of healing to do. And sometimes we think like if you receive freedom in something or, you know, a healing in something that you're just, it's gone, you know, and some people, yes, it can be completely removed, but there's also times where you have to now, like, you still have to work through those things. You still have to talk about them. You still have to, you know, like do the fleshly healing, you know, it, it it's both because your body, soul and spirit. And so my spirit just had this insane encounter, you know, and I mean, even my body did, but my soul now had to walk out the steps of actually like releasing those things because there were still things that I had never talked about. There were still things that I kept so down that I haven't uprooted yet. And after um, I had this encounter, it was, it was like more on my heart to start talking about those things. And there were multiple times where I felt like the spirit was like, okay, like you need to release this or you need to, you know, talk about this. But, and I was like, yeah, like I will. Or I'd be like, oh no, like, you know, I don't, I don't really want to, like, I don't have to, you know, like I'm already free, you know, like I'm healed. Like, why do I gotta talk about this? And he was like, you need to talk about it because there's, there's so much power in your word, right? Literally God created the world, created everything with the word. And so I understand that like us speaking things out that also brings healing and also brings freedom. And so there was one moment in the morning, um, this was after a while, the spirit telling me like, you need to talk about this, you know, you need to release this. And I was kind of like, no, no, no. I kept shoving it away. I um I walk into worship and I I think the first song like had just started and immediately I just felt it heavy on my chest and I started crying and I was like I knew like I need to release this right now and I like turned to the back and I see Natasha she's one of the um, leaders at the college and I go straight up to her and I remember I was like I need to confess like I need to release and she's like okay and so we like walk to the side and I just start telling her like literally from the age of five years old you know when I was first introduced like sexual things every single thing that happened after that things that like i'm ashamed of things that you know i did things that happened to me like you know why i started doing things i did the thoughts that i have you know all the way up until current day like literally till i was here even in the beginning of the year things that i would do or things that i'd be thinking you know like every single thing it was so it was like word bomb like i just couldn't help it but i just started releasing it i started like like especially from the things when i was younger i've never talked about that in my life you know and i didn't even like I didn't even know that I consciously remembered a lot of that stuff until I started speaking it out. And I didn't realize the power that it had over me and this kind of hold that it had on me until I started releasing it. And so after I released like all of this stuff, I remember like I was kind of scared because I'm like, oh no, like she's gonna, you know, like look at me different. And she looks straight at me and she's like, Emily, like I'm so proud of you. And like, it was so weird to hear that. Cause like after you pour out the darkest things about you, like the most ugly things about you, for someone to say like, I'm proud and I love you. Like, it's just different, you know, like I, I wasn't used to that. And so like she says this and then she just like pulls me in and is just hugging me and I'm just weeping. And she starts, you know, praying over me. And um, it was such a powerful moment. Like in the second when she was like praying, um, one thing that she said a lot of amazing things, but one thing that stuck with me is she was like, um, I remove any memory and any feelings attached to memories for things that happened to you stemming all the way back from your childhood, you know? And what was powerful about that is like, 
we have subconscious feelings that attach to like memories back then, you know, and like I would feel guiltier as if things were my fault, you know, and that caused me to speak or react in certain ways in my like life now, you know, with people in my life now. And so when she said that, like I literally felt not only like like physical light but also like this like lightness like it was like like i was lighter you know like i physically felt this and it was i was like whoa and so i'm just like crying more and um we walked back in and i had like no anxiety you know like all my anxiety is gone like i just felt complete freedom and i walk in and they're literally singing about freedom like right when i walk in i was like this is insane i remember just feeling like so light and like so happy and so it's it's interesting because even after the freedom, like, yes, I still struggled with, you know, certain feelings and soul things, but it was because I was still in the process of taking steps, right? Like I had just learned to stand and now I'm learning how to walk. And with walking, like I had to start talking about things. I had to start releasing things. And every time that I did that, it gave me power over the enemy because he doesn't have that to use, you know, because he doesn't have the other things that I was freed from to use. He has these little things. And so the more that I started releasing these little things because my heart was open to it and my mind was now open to like, okay, like I'm ready to do this. That's when I truly started walking out in the freedom that God gave me back at Katie. So Emily, what advice would you give somebody that is seeking God, but hasn't had an experience with God and that hasn't had that conviction yet based off of your experience? What advice would you give them? I would just encourage them to continue seeking. Um, and I know that it, it sounds easier than it is, you know, and, but also understand it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be, you know, rainbows, butterflies. That was one misconception I had is, you know, people make it look like it's easy and light and, you know, fun. And yes, you have beautiful moments with him and you'll have beautiful moments as you're seeking him, but it's still going to be hard. You know, Jesus, like, our relationship with him, he's not in our life to remove our hardships, but he's in our life to give us the endurance to get through the hardships, you know, and the trials. And so there's still going to be trials. There's still going to be things that come up, but I would just encourage you to keep going. Don't allow the enemy to kind of keep you down. Say you mess up. You know, I messed up multiple times, but it was a lot worse when I would dwell on that, when I would sit in that, you know? And so dive into the word, spend alone time with Jesus, you know, don't, always seek for say somebody else to either lay hands on you or to pray over you because I know I was doing that for a while and it wasn't until I took my sight and like my eyes off of the physical and turned them onto Jesus for himself that he truly came and was like okay like you're ready you know because before I was so focused on the physical realm when all I need to be doing was looking at him. God only wants your heart. He literally just wants a relationship. You know, he doesn't want this surface level stuff. He wants a relationship. And that comes with spending time with him. That comes with pursuing him. And as you do that, like, there's no way that he's not going to encounter you. My name's Emily, and this is my story for his glory.